Hello, 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 uh, fellow literati. Welcome, welcome, welcome to In the Dark. Of course, uh, this is the internet's most laid back a literature show. Uh, I'm Nikita, as per usual, uh, and today we are back, back again, to talk about um, the third part. No flux, I'm not waking up in six hours. Um, we're back to talk about part three of the question uh, posed by Kratos223. Uh, this time we're talking about my 12 uh, favorite poems and by extension um, some poet recommendations for you to check out. Uh, read a little bit. Hey, it's Gracie. Did you guys miss Gracie? Because she's back. She's, she's in every, every episode. We, uh, her contract, <laughs> her contract obligates her. No, crazy, that's my water. This girl. Her contract, uh, our contract obligates that she's in every episode. <laughs> so we gotta fit her in somehow. Um, but yeah, so, uh, Kratos223 asked for some, uh, uh, recommendations of, uh, works that I find fundamental and worth appreciating. So this time uh, we can talk about some poems that I think are very good. Um, and by extension, these are all, again, I, I don't have very esoteric... Uh, oh, Gracie, she's got my microphone. Gracie. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I have pretty... Standard taste. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to free my wire. Oh well, I guess we're gonna leave it. <laughs> She's laying on my lap now. She wants to be part of this literature show. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so my taste is not um, the most obscure, at least not for my favorites. I have, and this is the thing, I have a lot of things that I like, uh, and in fact everything I talk about on this channel um, to a large extent is stuff I like. Um, uh, so just like on a side note, uh, in terms of uh, more esoteric things, like Dada and Surrealism are really esoteric. Basically all the avant-garde movements um, are, are uh, kind of more obscure, which is I think what you mean. Um, so in terms of more uh, obscure examples, I, I think just getting picking up that anthology that I mentioned uh, two videos ago, the uh, uh, anthology of, of um, 20th century literature, that would give you, um, it would fill you in on basically everyone that matters. That's uh, not quite obscure, but obscure by mainstream literary standards. Uh, in the sense that, like, the average person that's read, like, Tolstoy and George Orwell, um, they, they maybe wouldn't have um, heard of these people. Uh, but in terms of, like, the avant-garde, they're not obscure at all. They are the most important people. Anyway, uh, four-minute intro aside, let's dive into my... <laughs> to my uh, 12 favorite poems, and, and we'll talk a little bit about each one again. Um, so hopefully you guys have <laughs> 20 minutes to spare. Um, ooh, my allergies. Crazy. Evil. She's making this show uh, a little bit less laid back and a little bit more sniffly. Do you hear her tail? She's hitting my table. Anyway, um, so the first piece, uh, the first poem is, um, can you hear me okay, by the way? <clears throat> Sorry. Um, the first piece is The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by uh, Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Um, Coleridge, of course, one of the most famous romantics, romantic poet. Um, he has a lot of good stuff worth checking out. 
Uh, his biography is pretty interesting too. Um, he was kind of like the the rock star, like druggie of the Romantics, um, at least of the, uh, I guess what, what you could consider like the would he be second generation? Anyway, that's too complicated. But so he 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 did um he took some opium. He, he was into drugs. Uh, and I think it shows his his work is a little bit more loose, more creative, um, a little bit more strange. Not not at all by like contemporary like drug standards of like doesn't make any sense. Like whoa, crazy hallucination drug trip. Um, it's still very methodical, but it's just a little bit more out there than like Wordsworth or something. Um, and the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, I believe, is like his most famous, his most uh, acclaimed piece. Um, it's a bit of a long poem, um, but it's really good. And uh, just like in terms of the plot, it's like uh, talk. It, it starts at this wedding, and there's this like crazy kind of old man that comes and starts telling his story. Everyone's like, "Huh?" But then he like he, he's so captivating that everyone starts listening to his story, uh, and he's like an old sailor basically, and so he retells um, the story of this trip, or or the speaker tells of him telling the trip um, uh, as they go, I believe, to, uh, I forget if it's north or south, but basically like to the polar circle or whatever. I'm not super advanced when it comes to north-south. When you get extreme, I don't know a whole lot. So anyway, they go where there's like icebergs and stuff, um, and they encounter an albatross. Anyway, I'm not going to... I'm not going to spoil it for you, um, but it's uh, really cool, it's like, um, it, it's one of the best uh, examples of the sublime, uh, which I want to make a whole video talking about as well. Um, anyway, I don't want to get into it or else we're never going <laughs> to, we're never going to finish this. Um, uh, the next thing is not an individual um, poem, it's, uh, I'm cheating a bit. Um, it's just haiku, uh, so no specific haiku. I really like haiku as a, um, as I guess, as like a form. Um, and they're so short that it's, I, I can't really pick just one. And honestly, I don't really remember um, them all by name. I'm not um, like a super hardcore scholar of haiku by any means. But it's just always pleasant to read, um, and I really admire the craft that goes into them. Um, and of course, this is in uh, translation. Um, so, you know, you give and you take. Um, but that book I mentioned in the last video, uh, oh, by the way, if you guys, I know, <laughs> it's all over the place, but uh, if anybody watched up until this point and still cares, um, there was two more videos before this, uh, which will be linked now. One of them was about uh, developing your foundation in literature. Um, and the one uh, after that, but before this one, was about my eight favorite books. Uh, so books I recommend, uh, literary books. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Um, also, it'll be linked below if you want to click on it after the video. Um, or just open up a tab of it now. Um, but yeah, so I mentioned a, uh, a great book uh, for haiku. Uh, and haiku is just the kind of thing that I, if I ever want to read a little bit, just open it up, read a couple. Uh, it's very cool. I love haiku. Okay, uh, the next one is Crossing Brooklyn Ferry by Walt Whitman. Um, Walt Whitman being probably uh, okay, one of the most um, significant and influential uh, American poets. He was writing in like the 19th century, maybe like, yeah, 19th century, so like 1800s. Um, transcendental poet, so he's kind of talking about um, like spiritual in a sense, but not, not really like 
not religious, sort of like a secular uh, spirituality, talking about um, how we're connected like through time and by by culture and by by uh, geography and, and things like that. Um, that's an, an awful um, it's an awful description of transcendental thought. Um, but it was something that was very trendy in America at that time. Um, but this poem is probably um, one of the best. Like, if you read it, you'll you'll get what I mean, because he makes it very clear. Um, but it's beautiful. It's just him taking a ferry and kind of meditating on um, all the people for hundreds of years to come that would take that ferry. Um, super beautiful uh, imagery, just... Um, it's one of the shorter examples of his kind of trademark voice um, that you would find in, in something like Leaves of Grass, but it's, it's a lot shorter, so. Very cool. Highly recommend it. Oh, and by the way, um, almost all of these you can find, uh, in fact, I believe all of them you can find online for free. Uh, so just Google them. Um, most of them should be on the Poetry Foundation website that I talked about, uh, which is poetryfoundation.org. A few of them aren't, like, uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, the next one is Why I Am Not a Painter by uh, Frank O'Hara. Uh, Frank O'Hara uh, was writing in, like, the mid-20th century uh, in New York. I believe his... Uh, like the, the posse he was part of was called the New York School. I might be wrong about this. Um, I'm not super familiar with Frank O'Hara, but he's also considered kind of one of the, um, the really influential uh, uh, American uh, poets. More modern, uh, more, yeah, more modern, I guess. Um, and that one is just a very kind of conversational poem uh, talking about uh, the differences between uh, painting and writing as art. Uh, very cool. It's like a little bit funny, has a couple of really uh, neat uh, effects that are they're kind of low-key, but they're very cool. Um, the next one is Gracie eating food again every episode. That's also in the contract. That she has to eat every episode. She's a hungry, hungry cat, eh? Um, okay, the next one is uh, After Great Pain, A Formal Feeling Comes by Emily Dickinson. Uh, Emily Dickinson, of course, uh, being um, also probably one of the most uh, influential and significant uh, American poets. Uh, and she was also writing kind of like, um, probably around the time of Walt Whitman. I might be wrong again. Uh, but like 19th century, um, writing sort of during like the Gothic period, um, I guess what could be considered the Gothic period. Sometimes she's considered Gothic, um, but she's very cool. She's a little bit different from all the other uh, American poets of that time. Um, but yeah, this poem is, uh, yeah, just simple, elegant. Uh, very beautiful, very uh, emotionally impactful. Uh, I love how it ends, the last few lines of it. Um, comes back to me quite a lot. Um, great short read. Um, okay, the next one is... Sorry about the squeaky chair, guys. The co-host. Um, the next one is In a Station of the Metro by Ezra Pound. Uh, Pound is uh, kind of one of the really important uh, modernists, so like early 20th century. Um, inspired by haiku, some people don't like him uh, for political reasons, which I think has nothing to do really with his art. Um, but anyway, he was inspired by, by kind of like oriental aesthetics, uh, haiku, um, like a lot of the modernists were. Um, and, and this poem is only a couple of lines, very beautiful, has like a haiku, haiku-esque quality to it, uh, and it describes um, a station of the metro, which is like the subway. 
um, great poem. And next up is, uh, ooh, 15 minutes. Wow, got to speed it up. <laughs> uh, sorry, guys, I'm going to try to uh, not talk so much about these, I guess. Or, mm, you know, whatever. You guys want to hear my thoughts, I imagine, uh, as opposed to just the list. Uh, so the next one is Ozymandias by uh, Percy Bysshe Shelley. Uh, I believe that's how you say his name. Bysshe? Per Percy B. Shelley. Um, and Ozymandias, uh, basically, so the speaker of the poem, oh yeah, Shelley is uh, also a romantic poet. Um, he's the generation after uh, Wordsworth and Coleridge. So I think Shelley would be second generation, or maybe he is third. I always get it confused. It's been a while, guys. Um, but anyway, he's a romantic uh, as well, kind of like uh, interested in, in politics. He was into sort of radical politics, French Revolution kind of thing. Um, he, he's sort of like, uh, I, I guess to a certain extent, he would, he would be kind of like a far left, like the equivalent of a far left um, revolutionary kind of character nowadays. Um, a brilliant poet, really good, uh, has a lot of good poems. Uh, but this one is probably his most famous, and it's one of my favorites as well. Uh, and, and basically the speaker in that poem is like traveling somewhere, um, perhaps in Africa. I don't remember if it's even mentioned, but in some desert. And he just sees the ruins uh, of some statue. Um, and then like there's an inscription. Anyway, and it talks, uh, basically the, the gist of it is that it's about um, kind of how no matter how great somebody's power is, um, over time, it doesn't matter. So, like, not only will you die, uh, but over, like, thousands of years, everything you make will die as well. Which is a little bit depressing. <laughs> um, but it's, uh, so it's also connected to the sublime in the sense of time. Uh, time is, like, maybe not infinite, but it's, it's, it's incomprehensibly vast, which is what the sublime is. Um, but we'll get back to that. I, I, I really like the sublime. I think it's cool. Um, okay, next up, uh, Ode to a Nightingale uh, by John Keats, another romantic. Um, probably one of the uh, most like technically skilled, most interesting poets uh, just ever, John Keats. Uh, interesting and very sad uh, biography. He died super young. Um, and this poem, uh, coincidentally, is about death. Um, and it's basically like a meditation. So the speaker sees a nightingale and, and meditates on like how the nightingale doesn't have a, an individual personality. It's just like every nightingale to, to us is basically identical. And how 2,000 years ago there was like a nightingale. Uh, so in a sense, like, nightingales are a collective, whereas people are individual. And then he meditates on, like, all the burdens of, of being an individual. And it's like, um, do I want to live or do I want to die, basically. Uh, great poem. Uh, lovely imagery, just very technically advanced. Also, I would recommend um, To August, I believe it's called, by him. Very, very good poem as well. Uh, okay, next up, A Cloud in Trousers by Vladimir Mayakovsky. Mayakovsky is a uh, Russian futurist poet, probably one of the most uh, unique of the Russian futurists, and also uh, one of the most kind of <laughs> accessible, because a lot of the Russian futurists were doing like formal experimentation. They're, they're kind of hard to read, just from the other ones that I know. Um, Mayakovsky, uh, probably for that reason, is the most famous of them and the most popular. He was kind of like a, a hero in the Soviet Union. Uh, he was writing around uh, like early 20th century, um, just around the time of the revolution and right after. Um, and this poem is, um, you know, structurally it's uh, not, not too crazy. Uh, but he does a lot of interesting stuff with imagery and 
a metaphor. Um, and it still has a plot, basically. It's just, uh, it starts off with him waiting for a girl um, that doesn't show up. And then it develops from there. But So it still has a plot, it still has a character, and structurally it's not too crazy, but then um, it has some really cool effects in it, which is why I like it. Um, the next one is uh, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost, which we looked at for my for the earlier uh, How to Read a Poem video. So if you've seen that, you already know this one, but it's uh, definitely a, a wonderful uh, poem, and if you haven't seen that video, check it out. I'm not going to go too, uh, too into depth. Uh, <clears throat> oh, my voice <laughs> um, is vanishing a bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. Uh, Robert Frost is the, uh, he was writing like kind of 1920s, stuff like that. Um, uh, this poem specifically is uh, uh, just kind of like a naturalistic description. Frost was famous for those just describing nature, um, but usually with some kind of uh, more abstract twist or some kind of symbolic or deeper meaning. Um, so in this one, the speaker stops in this snowy forest, uh, and it's snowing. Um, and it's just a beautiful scene, but it's also a meditation on, on uh, life and death. <laughs> um, but yeah, great poem, great poem, very lovely. Um, and the last one, uh, for the hardcore fans that are still here, thank you guys for watching. Uh, the last one is Howl by uh, Allen Ginsberg. Um, Allen Ginsberg was writing kind of post-war, uh, one of the most uh, important beats, uh, beat generation, um, which kind of uh, was the precursor to like hippie culture. So they popularized uh, drug experimentation, among other things, uh, a lot of formal experiments. Um, and, and Howell is uh, widely considered to be his most famous, uh, most significant uh, poem. Um, and it has a lot of really cool, it, it's, it's like a lyrical, um, it's a lyrical uh, poem, uh, sort of in the vein of, in the vein of uh, Walt Whitman, uh, who is one of Ginsberg's biggest inspirations. <clears throat> um, but I think even more so, like the, the writing just flows uh, very beautifully. Um, which is good because the, the images are very disjointed and it has this um, almost, uh, it feels kind of like a hallucination. Um, but very beautiful, uh, especially the second part. It has three parts. Uh, the second part is uh, my favorite, probably. Uh, just very cool, beautiful, a lot of um, surprising, powerful images. Um, yeah, just definitely worth reading. Very cool. Okay, that's it. Um, I kind of feel like I just said, here's 12 poems, and for each one I just said they're very cool. Um, what I should have been saying is that they're all very nice, very nice, uh, as PewDiePie would say. These are all very nice poems. Um, and you can't go wrong with these uh, with these poets. Oh no, I missed one. Whoops. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. Pranked ya. Somebody called the prank patrol. Uh, okay, quickly. Uh, oh, it was so long. Okay, anyway, the last one is uh, Death Fugue by Paul Solan. Um, his biography is a bit is a bit complicated, uh, but he was uh, writing in German, I believe. Um, spoke a few languages. I believe Death Fugue was written in German. Um, and Death Fugue is kind of about uh, concentration camps, uh, but it's stunning, probably one of my favorite poems. Um, even though this is a list of my favorite poems, I think this one is one of my, my top of all of these. Um, just like stunningly lyrical, really cool uh, imagery, powerful images. 
really strong emotional uh, resonance uh, and kind of like a one-of-a-kind uh, poem. I haven't really seen uh, anything else. It has like a musical quality, haunting, uh, very cool, very cool. Um, oh, and if you're that one, uh, you really, you want to get the Jerome Rothenberg translation of it. All the other translations are absolute garbage <laughs> from what I've seen. Um, so yeah, make sure you do that. Um, okay, now that's actually all of them. Thank you guys for <laughs> uh, for, for watching all of this, if you got this far. Uh, hopefully that was interesting. Check those guys out. All of those are super, super good uh, poems, super, super good poets. And based on what you like from those, you can kind of branch out, read some of their other stuff, and so on. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Uh, and I'll see you tomorrow for the last of four parts to this question. Uh, yeah, see you then. <laughs> Take care, guys.